Hey, my name is Matt. Welcome to Ranking Tactics. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to become a prompt engineer. That is going to be the hottest, absolute hottest field going forward for 2023. If you can't prompt engineer, you will be at a severe disadvantage compared to your peers and compared to your competition. You have to learn how to prompt engineer. If you are in school right now, this is something you need to learn how to do. And you're at an advantage because you, you're not graduated yet. You still have time. But if you're a senior right now in college or you've just graduated and you can't prompt engineer, you need to learn how to do that as soon as possible. Now, we're going to be using all of this prompt engineering inside of a tool called ZimWriter. You can use it in some other tools, but it's a little bit more difficult. It works best if you go to the playground in OpenAI, but you can, if you use it in ZimWriter, you can use it anywhere on your desktop, whether it's Microsoft Word or Notepad or in your browser through Google Docs or whatever, you can prompt engineer everywhere. And it's absolutely fantastic, but you need to learn how to do it. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna teach you how to become a prompt engineer. You're gonna have incredible power and I hope it opens up so many doors and opportunities for you. And if it does, I want you to drop a comment below and tell me how you're using this because this is powerful. This is so powerful. You might have already prompt engineered a little bit, you might have gone to chat GPT and, and gotten your feet wet, but I'm gonna go, we're gonna go well beyond that and teach you some advanced concepts in this video. So without further ado, let's jump in. Now we're gonna be using all of our prompt engineering in my AI writing software called ZimWriter. It is an AI writing software that works on Windows and I'd like to get a Mac version soon. I don't have an ETA on that, but you, you can go to my website right now. I'll have a link in the description below. There's a, a very inexpensive monthly plan and there's also a limited time lifetime deal to get ZimWriter. Now, in this video, we're just going to be doing the prompt engineering, but ZimWriter does so many other things, including writing 6,000 word blog posts at the click of a button that are SEO optimized, according to Fraser Surfer. Lots, lots of really cool things it does, but check my other videos out for that. In the description below, there's a link. Definitely check it out. So we're going to be using ZimWriter and the magic command trigger. Now, on my setup, my configuration, I've designated that as control one. Now, you can obviously go in here and change your keyboard triggers to whatever you want, but my default is control one. So I'm going to open up Notepad, and Notepad, this is Notepad Plus, but you can do it in normal Notepad. This is a great place to start learning and playing around with the magic commands and learning how to do these things. And this works better than ChatGPT because ChatGPT will look back at what you previously wrote and it could skew your results going forward. So ChatGPT definitely has its place and has its use cases, but its, its place and use case is not for learning prompt engineering. But you can take what you learn here and apply it in ChatGPT. Some of these things will translate over there just fine, but some of them don't. Some of them are better either in ZimWriter or in the OpenAI Playground. But let's talk about prompting. What is a prompt? You've probably done this before if you went to ChatGPT. A prompt is simply a question or a command that you're going to tell the AI to carry out. So why is the sky blue? And I'll select the text. For a magic command in ZimWriter, it only works if I select the text and only the text is that I've selected is fed into ZimWriter and then passed to OpenAI and then to get your result. So we have to select the text. I selected it and I hit control and then one on my keyboard and then release and ZimWriter will contact the AI and carry out the result. The sky is blue because of the way sunlight interacts with the Earth's atmosphere. When sunlight passes through the atmosphere, the molecules in the air scatter the blue light more than other colors in the visible light spectrum, making the sky appear blue. Hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't, I, I think I knew that, but I forgot. Now, what's neat about this is because the magic commands only work on what you highlight, we don't have to clear this out or delete it. We can just make a new line and ask it something else. Why do dogs wag their tails? We'll select it and we'll hit control one. Dogs wag their tails as a sign of happiness and excitement. It is thought that they do this to communicate with humans and other animals. Oh, I didn't know that, cool. So you can just make a new line and go down here and write some more stuff and select it and highlight it. And you just keep this line, giant list if you want to. So theoretically, you could have different files for different clients if you're an agency. And this could have all your data on it and you could refer back to prompts that you uh, that worked well for you and you could delete some stuff that didn't work well and you can just keep a running log. It's very simple. And this again, works not only in Notepad, but works in Google Docs, works in Microsoft Word, works wherever, as long as you have a Windows computer. Now let's get a little bit more, let's get a little bit more fancy. Let's ask it something that's not just one sentence long. Uh, explain why the earth is round. Use a joke and some humor right in the style of Al Capone. Pretty interesting, let's see what happens. So we've written multiple sentences here. 
And you can do that with the magic command. And we select it and we hit control one. And this is an example of getting it to write in my style or a potential client's style. Maybe your client is a humorous website that talks about different statistics and facts, but does so in the style of Al Capone. Then yeah, you could fill your whole website out with content like this. Why is the earth round? Ha, that's a tough one, but I got an answer for you. It's cause that's the way God rolled it. Get it? He rolled it into a round shape like a ball. Heh. I'm sure glad he didn't try to make it into a square because that'd be a real mess. Hey, that's pretty funny. So you can, if you don't like that, you say, oh, I don't like that. You can just delete it and you can generate it again. Or we could delete it and then modify our prompt. Why is the earth round? Nowadays, scientists say it's all due to gravity, but I like to think of it this way. The earth is round because God wanted it to be more aerodynamic so it could fly faster around the sun. Ha ha, get it? Fly like an airplane? That's a good one. That's a little bit too, too cheeky for me. Let's get rid of this. Let's write it in the style of, oh, Stephen King, make it depressing and scary and scary. All right. Actually, let's use some gore. I don't know what, what will happen if we do that. So this allows you to really get in here and just play with it and just see what, what is working for you. And, but you're also getting practice. You're essentially programming. You're learning what works, what doesn't work. We got a lot of output. The earth is round in its shape. And it's a shape that is both horrifying and mysterious. Imagine being stuck on its curved surface with no escape forever rolling around in a never ending cycle of night and day. The true reason our planet is round is something that scares even the bravest among us. It's not an accident that the earth is round, but a product of the violence of its creation. Oh, wow. I won't read the whole thing, but do you get the point? You'd, a prompt, a magic command doesn't have to just be one sentence. It could be multiple sentences and you can play with it, play with the who's going to write in the style of what. You can add some more descriptors about what you want, make it gory, make it depressing and scary. And you can see what you get. Now, imagine we just had all kinds of just different rules and commands in here. So imagine that being our magic command. I didn't just imagine I didn't just repeat all this, didn't copy paste, but this, these were all different commands. Then it gets a little bit hard because what's going to happen is some of the rules might contradict each other. The AI might not know which rule is the most important because it might determine in, in its own brain because the AI is thinking differently than you. The AI is trying to figure out what rules are important and, and if it can follow all these rules or if any of these conflict with each other. And so you might not get the output you want. So start small, start simple, start with one sentence and then maybe add another sentence in there and compare and then add something else in there and compare. Add some more rules in there and compare. We could say, write five paragraphs. So we can say, let's see if it will do this. And the other thing you wanna do is see if you can get this consistently. Because if it just happens one time, then it's not repeatable. You want it to be repeatable. So if it can happen 80% of the time, then you probably have a good rule on your hands, a good prompt. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. Hey, that's pretty good. So what I would do is if this is what I was going for, if I was going for five paragraphs, I'd probably do a couple generations and see if each time it was five paragraphs or thereabouts. And then I'd adjust accordingly. Maybe it didn't work when I said write five paragraphs. Maybe it worked though when I wrote five, five paragraphs, when I actually spelled out the word five. These are things to test out. These are things to explore. Maybe the word write, maybe it wasn't working with the, with the word write. Maybe I would say use five paragraphs. Maybe it worked better with the word use, all right? So you really have to tweak all of this, not just the entire sentence, but the words in the sentence. So instead of use some gore, maybe that wasn't working. Maybe we would wanna say, write the output in a way that uses some gore. Maybe that gets us what we want. So you really do have to play with these different prompts. That covers the basics on using these prompts. The next thing I wanna work on some real world applications for this. I wanna do a couple different examples and I think you'll find this exciting. A lot of real world use cases here. So we have a website. I live around the Toledo area and this is a TNJ router service. They are a very highly accredited plumbing and what do they do? Plumbing and sewer and draining cleaning in the Toledo area. So if you need a good uh, company to call, call them up. They seem very reputable. They have good reviews, a lot of five stars or better business bureau accredited, A plus, and they serve multiple locations. So they have this website here and the website looks good. I'm nothing to say negative about the website. It's ranking for a lot of things like water heater. Let's try water heater. There we go. So they're 
one, two, three, four, five down, but for some things they're not ranked at all. How to fix low pressure, let's see, fix low pressure repair, Toledo, Ohio. And Ruder Masters, no, I'm not seeing T and J. So I don't see them ranked at all for this. So a local business, how do you get more service? Maybe they want to advertise their solution to, to fixing low water pressure. And I don't know if they, I don't know if they do that or not, but I'm just coming up with something that they're not ranked for right now and seeing how we can use magic commands to do that. So how could they get more customers? One way is obviously run ads. They could run ads. They could be more involved in the community. So they have this community involvement page, which is fantastic. You got to be involved in the community. If you're a small business, uh, you could go to the chamber of commerce and make some networking connections and stuff like that. A lot of the service probably comes through word of mouth. But what if they wanted to get some organic traffic? Can they do that? Because right now, Google is looking for things that this company does. And if they don't have a page that talks about fixing low water pressure, or we offer low water pressure service, then they're not going to rank for that just because they don't have a page on it. So how can we use magic commands to build some content for a page for a local business or a local service? Because a lot of that's where 90% of the clients are, right? Local services that just need help showing up for these particular services. Because right now you're gonna show up in the map pack up here, you're gonna show up for ads up here, but you still wanna to try to rank to get that free organic traffic. So what can we do? Here is a prompt I'm working on right now, or magic command I'm working on right now. We can use the word prompt or magic command interchangeably, but magic command sounds cooler. So I have company with colon, T and J router service. So this is the name of the company. Now, why did I choose to write up here? And we're gonna select all this stuff and have the AI write about it. I wanna talk through my thought process as I created this, because this is prompt engineering. Getting the AI to write about what we wanna write about in a way that is what we want. So how can we do that? I chose to write the word company with a colon and then have the company name over here. The AI is smart enough, in my opinion, to understand that if I have a company with a colon, that means that there is a company name coming after the company. Same with location, location, colon, Toledo, Ohio. Now they serve multiple locations. A lot of these local businesses, what they'll do is they'll have different service pages. So they'll have a low pressure service page for Toledo, a low pressure service page for Oregon, low pressure service page for Sylvania. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll write about the service you offer, but you wanna write it in a different way for each of those pages. So Google's probably not gonna see you as a doorway page if you have identical content, but it can help if you, you write using different content, different words, but your, your service isn't changing. So how can you do that? You can do that with magic commands. So down here in the About Us page, there's some background on the company. I have a background section over here. So background, colon, 20 years experience, 20 years experience, excellent customer service, reliable service, fully licensed, all that stuff's in here. And then A plus, on the Better Business Bureau okay, and fully accredited. But that's some background of the company. Now comes the magic part. This is the really cool part. This is where I'm telling the AI what to do. Now, usually I'll have the actual command at the bottom because I think sometimes when having the command up top, sometimes the AI gets confused if we're not doing samples. And I'll, I don't wanna get you confused on samples yet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But if we're just doing a, a non-sample magic command, then this is the way I recommend doing it. You have the command down below. So I have used keywords, and then I want to put some keywords in here. To discuss R, I say R because it's, from, I want the AI to understand it's from the perspective of the company who is writing this. Incredible, I can swap that out for whatever I want. Low water pressure, a repair service, repair service. And I can either, Put a colon here or i can just end it and then have an output down here let's try that we'll just do that to make it even clearer for the ai you know what no i won't i'll put a colon up here so right now again we have company tnj router service location toledo ohio background of the company and then our command oh and then what we got to do is we got to put key keywords in there we don't have keywords so low water pressure repair service we can we can just say discuss our incredible low water pressure repair service but I wanna talk a little bit about low water pressure repair. I don't know anything about it. Now, obviously, if, the, if I had the company owner sitting next to me, he could use, I, I could be like, what do you do when you repair low water pressure? What are some things you do? And I could put those keywords in here. I could put five keywords in here. Uh, I could use phrase to put low water pressure repair service into Google and I'll see what keywords come up. So that's another way to get keywords to talk about. Another way is to just to go to Google or ChatGPT 
and investigate what low water pressure, how to fix low water pressure is all about. So here's some ideas. Clogs, that could be a keyword. Clogs, water pressure regulator, a booster, water pressure booster, and then we'll say well pump. Okay, so those are some relevant keywords possibly about the concept of water pressure in a house. And let's just leave it at this and we'll see what we get. We're gonna try this. So we're gonna select all this text. I'm gonna select it all. I'll hit control one. Okay, at T&J Service, we offer incredible low water pressure repair services using the latest tools and technology. Our technicians are fully licensed and certified, fully licensed and certified, and have over 20 years of experience in the plumbing industry, 20 years experience. We can help you troubleshoot and repair a wide range of issues related to low water pressure, such as clogs and blockages in pipes and plumbing fixtures. Water pressure regulator repair and replacement, water pressure regulator, water pressure booster installation and repair. So the AI knows what a water pressure booster does. You install it and you can repair it because it can break. And pump maintenance and repair. So the AI understands because it has a big brain that well pumps can break down and they can be repaired. Now it doesn't know these things about all types of products, but there are some products the AI just knows about. Basic concepts. Our team is dedicated to providing excellent customer service and we guarantee satisfaction with every job. Now we didn't tell it to say that it did. You can delete that out if you don't want, or, all right, we can leave it in. We are proud to have an A plus rating on the Better Business Bureau and to be fully accredited. We said right over here. When you need fast, reliable, that was reliable on here, reliable service, an expert low water pressure repair services call T and J Rooter Services today. That's pretty good. I really like that actually. So you know, here's one of their pages for gas leaks. So you can imagine this saying, choose us for low water pressure repair services. And we take this, we paste it in right here. And then maybe we want to say, we want to say something like this, write a bullet list of different ways a company can repair low water pressure in your house of let's say five, no, seven, seven different ways. So we have a couple paragraphs to put down on under here. And now we have water, low water pressure repair services include, and then we can paste this in, check the water pressure regulator, clean out aerators and faucets. Check, obviously you'd have to do these things, or maybe you have your own list to put in, but see how easy it is to quickly build out a service page for a particular company. And now we can change this to Oregon, Ohio. So we can change that to Oregon, Ohio, and we can tweak this. Mention, mention the location one time. So we've tweaked it a little bit. We'll put output over here because now we have multiple sentences. All right, let's see what we get. All right, so here's our output. Now we only got one paragraph this time. Are you experiencing low water pressure in Oregon, in the Oregon, Ohio area? So now it's using our location. And this would be great because now we can go and create another page for Oregon. And it, it says different things. It says the same thing, but using different phrasing and whatnot. But I don't like it because it's just one paragraph. So what can we do? So let's engineer the prompt a little bit better. Write four paragraphs. Let's see if we get what we want. If we don't get what we want, we tweak it more. And what you can do eventually is you start creating a, a reusable prompt that works for, a, for your particular situation. Maybe as an agency, you do this all day long. You create local service pages for a company. You'll come in here and you'll find a prompt that works beautifully for building out a local service page and you can use it for different companies. You just go up here and you change the company name. You go over here and you change the location name. You go over here and you change the background. You could probably leave the same keywords if the service is the same, but it's really easy you just modify this for different situations. I was taking a little bit of time because everybody's on it over the weekend. This is Saturday right now. They're all probably on it, but look at what we get. We get a lot of content. When you're dealing with low water pressure in Oregon, Ohio, the experts at TNJ Router Service are here to help. Our team has over 20 years of experience in resolving these issues and providing excellent customer service. We're fully licensed and certified, accredited, et cetera, et cetera. I'll let you pause the video and read this, but the point is 
we have completely unique content now that we did not generate before. And it's for a new area. So we can go up here and put the next area in. We can put Lucky Ohio. Then we can put Holland, Ohio. You know, whatever you want to do. It's so simple. All right. So that is the local, building out a local prompt engineering for a local business. Let's try something else. Now, this is a prompt for a LinkedIn post. Recently, don't tell anybody this. If you're still watching the video at this point, then you'll know my secret. But I have been writing my LinkedIn posts with ZimWriter. And is that cheating? Not really, in my opinion, because I'm telling it what I want it to do. I am, I'll encounter something during the day, I'll learn something and I want to share that, but I want to share that in a well written way, an upbeat way with my audience in my tone of voice in my style. And so I create my prompt, I engineer my prompt to do just that. This is an example. Being an entrepreneur is like riding a wave on a surfboard while learning to surf. It's exhilarating, scary and dangerous and packed with anxiety. So how can you manage all of those feelings at once? The best way is to realize that you're succeeding because you're doing something. Five or 10 years ago, you weren't, but now you are. You're waking up daily with adrenaline in your veins, excited but scared, eager but tired. Cherish those moments because they don't come very often. Now that sounds pretty good. I wrote that myself. That sounds pretty good, but maybe it could sound better. Let's see what the AI could do. And I wanna use a couple hashtags and emojis. So here's my command. Write a three paragraph LinkedIn post based on the above while also encouraging the reader to use this advice as they ride their own entrepreneurial wave. Use a couple hashtags and end with a masculine emoji. That sounds pretty cool. Let's take all this and we will try a magic command on it. As entrepreneurs, we ride the roller coaster of emotions every day. One moment we're on top of the world and the next we're desperately trying to stay afloat. This is the nature of the beast and it's easy to get overwhelmed. But if we could hold on to the idea that we are succeeding because we are doing something, it could help us to stay focused and motivated. We must learn to embrace the uncertainty and take each day as it comes. This is what will help us survive and thrive in our entrepreneurial journey. It's important to remember that the thrill of the ride is what makes it worth the effort. Wow, that's real. I'm gonna take this right now and I'm gonna post it on LinkedIn because that's pretty freaking cool. So is that cheating? No, I told it exactly what I wanted to write in my own voice. So there you go. How do you see more? Pretty cool. See how easy that is. Now I could have done all this in LinkedIn and that's the beauty of ZimWriter. You can be in, in LinkedIn and do these things. You don't have to go to a different, different tool, login and all that. ZimWriter is always there waiting for you to tell it what to do. Well, let's see what else we got. Oh, so I was helping this lady last night and she was, she wanted, let me paste this in and just explain it. She want, and I'd never seen this done before. This is really interesting. She wanted some inspirational ideas for a robe. What was it called? Robe? Dry robe. So there's this thing called dry robe. And I guess it's fuzzy on the inside. And it lets, and it's big enough that you put it on. And then you can change out of or into your wetsuit uh, inside of it. You can put your arms inside your inside this jacket and then completely change, get all, <laughs> take all your clothes off. And, but you can do it in the privacy of this jacket. So, you know, it's completely safe. And then you're nice and dry and you're nice and toasty and all that stuff. So she wanted to create some inspirational ideas or possibly different ways to take an, a, a potential email. So not necessarily headings, not necessarily H1s, not necessarily H2s or whatnot, but she wanted output that looked like this. Let me take this and I'll put it in a separate window so we don't get confused. So don't you just love getting out of the freezing cold water and wrapping a tiny towel around you? Isn't it fun not having any privacy when getting out of your wet clothes on a beach in public or with a tiny towel? You get out of the cold ocean, you can't participate in the conversation with your friends because your teeth are chattering so loud. All your friends are cozy, warm, and they're dry. So this isn't an H1, it's not an H2, it's not an email title, it's not a heading inside of an email, but it's like a thought, a concept, an inspiration for how to take some marketing angles. And that's interesting because the AI knows what an H1 is. It knows what an H2 is. It knows what an email title is. But it doesn't necessarily know what an inspirational concept is. So how can we replicate this? This is what she wanted. How can we do this, but for other use cases, like the other use case was shampoo. So we have shampoo. And how can we write five different, and she classified these as, uh, let's see here, 
funny and sarcastic. So how can we replicate this, but for different types of products and have it carry that funny and sarcastic tone? So this is an example of where we're gonna use a sample. A sample is very important when, number one, the AI doesn't know what you're talking about or doesn't know what you want. And number two, I guess it overlaps with number one, it's not giving you it in the format that you want. That's where a sample comes in very handy. And it's, this is a real advanced concept. This is true prompt engineering right here. And if you stayed for this entire video and you're here, you don't wanna miss this. This is gonna be very important. Now, I don't know if you can do this on ChatGPT. I know you can do this inside of, I know you can do it in ZimWriter because we're gonna do it inside of ZimWriter. You can definitely do it in the playground in OpenAI. But being able to do this is incredibly valuable. It's gonna level up your skills. So how can we replicate this? What do we do? So we create a sample. Let me take all this and I'll put it in a new window. There is a right and wrong way to do this. The right way to do this is when you get the output that you want consistently. The wrong way to do this is when you don't get the output that you want consistently. Aside from that, everything else is on the table. So what I mean by that is, up here I started with the, word, the phrase product type colon, and then I put down changing rope. And then I have product features and benefits, and then I have a command down here about what to do. And that's my, that would be my command. Now, why did I choose product type? I just felt that could encapsulate the concept that we wanted to talk about in here. I don't wanna say the product name, I don't wanna say, dry robe, because AI doesn't know what a dry robe is, but an AI would know what a changing robe is. And that's not the product, the, uh, the product is not a, a changing robe, it, that's the type of product. It's a changing robe. So I said product type, colon, and then changing robe. And then I wanna have some features and benefits. Okay? And then their features are different than benefits. You can change out of your wet clothes from anywhere. Now, I went to this page over here, and I just pulled some out based on their literature. Change out of your wet clothes from anywhere. Keep warm in any climate. Good looking changing robe. The best way to dry off after swimming. And then I have a command, write five copyright writing inspirational ideas about the product that are funny and sarcastic. And then I have her, her output that she gave me. And then what we're gonna do, that's a sample. That would be our input and the output. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in these three hash marks, which will tell the AI, this is a sample. And now we want you, the AI, to do it again, but without the result. I want you, the AI, to come up with the result. So we have the same format. It's important to have the same format. So the product type is shampoo. And no longer a changing robe, the product type is now a shampoo. The product features. So now I need a couple different features about the shampoo or benefits. Protection against dandruff. America's number one dandruff shampoo. Fresh scent of classic clean. And then here's what I want it to do. Write five copywriting inspirational ideas. So same thing up here. We don't want to change this. But the product that are funny and sarcastic. Now you could change this. You could put down depressing or something like that. And that you're going to have to test it out to see if you get what you want. But it's important to keep the same input aside from the, the type and aside from the features and benefits, but keep the same gist of it. But if, if you wanna tweak funny and sarcastic to a different format, yeah, you can do that. So let's see what we get and then we'll talk a little bit more about this. I'll select all this text. You select it all because we're telling the AI, here's an example, an example input and example output. And now I want you to do the same thing. Here's my input and I want output according to the output up here. I want you to replicate what I just did. We take all of it, hit control one, I'm gonna let the AI work for a second. So we get, so let's see if this is funny and sarcastic about a shampoo that is based on these features. Don't you just love that feeling of dread when you realize you have dandruff? That's funny and sarcastic. Because no, you wouldn't. Have you ever had so much dandruff that it felt like it was snowing? Do you ever get tired of hearing people whisper, there goes the dandruff guy? <laughs> That'd be terrible. Want to be the life of the party, all you need is a strong dandruff defense. Okay. Did you know that you can make snow angels in the shower with America's number one dandruff shampoo? That is freaking awesome. Wow. Did you know that you can make snow angels in the shower with America's number one dandruff shampoo? How much would a marketing company pay for that? Wow. That's real. I'm really impressed with that. Now, when you're doing this, 
and we'll do another sample too. When you're doing this, it's critical, critical that your sample follows logically. And this is so important. You might need to rewind the video and watch this. We have an output that we created, but this output needs to be based on this input. If I go up here and I say, swimming, robe, warm, this is not necessarily based on those features and those benefits. So we need to make sure that the features and the benefits in this example that we're talking about right now, not this sample, but this example, we wanna make sure that the features in, this be in these benefits actually are related. They don't have to be explicitly recited, but they need to be related in a way that the AI can understand to this output. Because if it's not, then the AI is gonna give you something that's not related. So when you make a sample for the AI, it all has to make sense. It has to literally be what you're putting in and then what you expect the AI to give you out. Now this is harder to do sometimes because maybe you're not a good copywriter. Maybe you aren't able to come up with this stuff. Some people, what they'll do is they'll go to their competitors and they'll lift content that they have and put it in here. You know, that's up to you to do. I'm not gonna tell you that's right or that's wrong, but you'll have to come up with what you want the AI to write about and the expected output. And one of the downsides to that is sometimes the AI can do a better job than you can. And so you might be hindering the AI when you give it a sample. So don't always give it a sample. The other thing is obviously this will cost more. Now this is still dirt cheap, but if you wanna put in five different samples and you can do that, you can say, oh, there's one sample and I'll make another sample. And then I'll make another sample down here. And you select all this text. It's, it can get expensive if you're doing this all day long. So yeah, you can have more samples, but just realize you're selecting more text as input and then getting your output. So let's vary this up. Let's do another example of this sample. Here's the next one. So we have cat shampoo now, all right? And here's the product features and benefits. Smells great, removes grease from fur, non-toxic. Write five copywriting inspirational ideas about the product that are funny and sarcastic. Very simple, all we did, we swapped out the features and the benefits. We changed up the product type. So we select it all, we hit control one. Give it a minute. All right, here's what we got. Have you ever been embarrassed to be seen in public with your cat because of its greasy fur? No, I haven't, but man, that's be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Or maybe you're having a dinner party and you don't want your cat to be <laughs> the stinky one in the room. If you're looking for a way to keep your cat's fur looking and smelling great, look no further than our cat shampoo. Oh, that's generic. No need to worry about harsh chemicals. Our cat shampoo is made with natural non-toxic non ingredients. Want to make sure your cat is the most popular one at the party. Our cat shampoo will make sure their fur is smelling and looking great. So those are nice, but they're not really at the level of that uh, snow angels in the, the shower like the last one. So I just delete it and I generate it again. Don't you just love it when your cat smells like a bouquet of flowers? Looking for a way to make your cat stand out from other cats in the neighborhood? Why not give them a luxurious bath with our non-toxic grease removing cat shampoo? It's not bad. Have you ever tried to hug your cat only to be engulfed in a cloud of grease? Those aren't bad. So we can always go in here and change things up, write five copywriting inspirational ideas about the product that are funny, that are witty. And, and let's do sarcastic, yeah. Witty and sarcastic, let's try that. So you could spend all day just tweaking this to get it perfect because if this is what you do for your company, your clients, and you do it all day long, you get that perfect template, that perfect magic command and you save it somewhere, then you can just reuse it again and again for different companies. Is your cat's fur, here we go, here we go. Is your cat's fur so greasy that it's starting to look more like a frying pan than a pet? Oh, no need to worry about your cat walking around smelling like a skunk. Now you can give them a shampoo that smells like roses. Keep your cat's fur from looking like a grease bomb by using this non-toxic, delightful smelling cat shampoo. Is your cat's fur so greasy that it can be mistaken for a mop? <laughs> Put an end to this confusion with our non-toxic cat shampoo. Stop your cat from becoming the laughing stock of the neighborhood with this easy to use cat shampoo. Is your gossiping about my cat again? So that's an example of how we can tweak just a word and get the AI to go in a different direction. It's very important to make small changes, make small changes and then run, run the magic command again and see if it's repeatable. See if it actually did cause 
the change or if it was it was just chance that you happened to get a better result. So this is an example of how we can, again, use samples to tell the AI, to get the AI to write in a particular format. And we wouldn't need to do this if it was something simple, write five H1 headings for a blog topic about greasy cats. Now the AI knows what H1 headings are. So it's going to write and knows how long they typically are and stuff like that. Whereas these would not be typical H1 headings because they're just too long. The AI knows that H1 headings are a certain length. So when you say five H1 headings, it knows to give you something of this length. Unlock the mystery of greasy cats, why cats get greasy coats and how to manage it, et cetera, et cetera. You say, you know, write, write one email about, let's just say write an email about that, about our greasy cat shampoo to solve the issue of your greasy that is a terrible prompt but the ai knows what an email will look like and so it will write that but when we start asking the ai for inspirational discussion points that's when we might need to use a sample but we have something that looks just like an email now the ai knows how to do that so again i don't know what your use case is i don't know what your use case is but depending on what it is you're going to need to uh, engineer your prompt to accomplish what you want. And the best way to do that, if you're not getting the output you want, is to write in the way that you want the AI to, to do it. So if you want these five inspirational ideas, write down those five inspirational ideas, use that as a sample, create your prompt for those inspirational ideas, and then replicate that down below, Re replicate that down here to help the AI, AI out. So, Again, I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please like the video and drop a comment down below. Prompt engineering is the future. This is where the jobs are going. And it can make or break an agency now. If you can hire somebody or become on your own a prompt engineer, like an expert prompt engineer, you can basically accomplish whatever the clients want. And you don't have to give them your prompts. Your prompts are your secret sauce. That's what's going to set you apart from all the other people going into chat GPT and saying, write five ideas about a changing rope or five ideas for a cat shampoo. You can get exactly what the client wants because you know how to engineer the prompt. You know how to speak to the AI. So I hope this helped. Again, please check out ZimWriter. There's links in the description below. There's also a link to the Facebook group. Drop a comment and until next time, good luck with your content generation and I'll talk to you later.